Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about a hack attack. <laughs> now, this isn't an attack by a hacksaw to hack away a finger or any other important appendage. This was an actual hacker attack against my website. The attack was the standard for this day and age distributed denial of service, and let me show you what that means. Let's assume that this is the server hosting my website and this is the hacker. The original denial of service was the attacker sending multitudes of requests against the website. And anytime you make a request to a website, some of the resources of the computer hosting the website get used up. So that's for things like retrieving information from a database, processing the information and returning things back to the originator. With multitudes of requests, those resources get used up. So it's kind of similar to your PC when you have 20 applications open and you wonder why one is so slow. So similarly, that was the denial of service. Originally, that was easy to spot because it was one, maybe two IP addresses doing that. So you can easily block those. But in this day and age, the hacker gets access to additional servers and makes those servers connect to the website. Not only that, the, uh, each attack, each server is not used consecutively in the attack. They might be used again and again during the entire timing of the attack, but not one request after the other. Now, let's take a look at the January 24th log files and explain all that that I've just shown. So for January 24th, I had 1,071,865 requests against the website. Out of those, 1,070,876 were against a bogus uh, folder called admin. Now, that means only 1,000 requests were legitimate and everything else was just an attack to a bogus address that doesn't exist on the website. Now, you might be thinking a server hosting a website should be able to handle a million requests a day, and probably you're right. But, you know, for big corporations like Amazon, Google, or any other big box stores, that would not be a problem because they have the budget to finance a particular IT department or at least outsource it and make sure that it behaves properly. I'm a small guy and I rely on shared hosting to keep costs down. Now, let's take a look at three time periods and see what happened then. So at 8, 11, and 4 seconds, those were the IP addresses of the servers connecting to the website. Now, they are encrypted because I don't have root access. So right from the start, my hands are tied in terms of figuring out where those IPs are and you know, beginning to block them. Uh, let's look at another time slot, 8.06, uh, I mean 8 uh, in 11 and 6 seconds. You know, I had, you know, more requests then, uh, and again, all different IP addresses. Now let's take a look at the very first IP address that we just highlighted. and see, uh, I know I did this uh, statistic earlier, there were about 130 times this particular IP address tried to access my website. And we see from the timing that it's not every second, so it's been used, you know, a couple of minutes apart. So that really makes it difficult to determine if it's a legitimate request or a hacker attack. So how did I learn about it? Now, it was a cold January morning, January 24th, when I woke up and I do everything that a person does when they wake up, which is check for messages. <laughs> so I received this uh, email from the ex-hosting company that basically said, I violated terms of service, so my website is permanently down. And of course, being half asleep, now I am fully awake. <laughs> And uh, I kind of looked at the terms of service they have sent me in the email to see what I broke. And one of them was that uh, my website is running constantly and that's uh, using the resources of the computer or that I'm trying to break certain defenses of the computer and clog their infrastructure or whatever. 
So I wrote back to them and I said, well, the last time I updated the website was before the Christmas season. And if anything happened, my website should have done this, uh, you know, a lot sooner, not wait three months to uh, clog the services. I also looked at some of the IP addresses that they gave me. They, uh, they actually didn't give me an encrypted uh, IP address like you see right here. They gave me an actual IP addresses and I'm looking them and uh, I'm finding them from all over the world. And I said, okay, well, those are uh, uh, IP addresses from servers from all over the world and I'm here in Canada. So definitely I am not breaking anything. So that looks like an attack by a third party to which I have no control of. Uh, so they sent me another reply stating that, okay, the admins have reinstated the website, but the same attack continued. So they had to take it down permanently and they have made the decision to permanently not host my website. And that was a bit of a moment for me because now I had to think, you know, what do I do? Uh, as I was searching around for other hosts, I found a host that you know, has more abilities to protect against such distributed denial of service attacks. And of course, <laughs> I signed up. So I had to transfer files from the X host to the new host. Uh, so for that reason, my website was down for about a week. And it could have been down a little bit shorter, uh, but I missed a slash in one of the configuration files. And that kind of gave me unexpected results. So it took me time to figure out what I did or what I didn't do. Uh, so that's why my website was down for about a week. Uh, so that also sparked a conversation with the ex-host about who is responsible for protecting against denial of service attack. Uh, to me, it is uh, about 50-50. Uh, I did everything recommended against those attacks, but as a hosting company, uh, they have the ability to modify the infrastructure to protect against such attacks uh, because they all have the access to the firewall, establish firewall rules, etc, etc, etc. But the response was that the administrators, they only block IPs based on a certain range if there is an abuse from them. And I'm saying, well, denial of service attack is an abuse, so you can establish rules, but they denied. So that also pushed me to go to the host, to the new host, much sooner. Um, so that was basically that one week of trials and tribulations that took me away from the creative process. And I <laughs> also had an additional exchange with the ex-host about money. <laughs> well, I mean, what else do you, sp <laughs> what else do you quarrel with with your ex? <laughs> money is one thing. So, <laughs> uh, so I asked them for refunds because they are uh, denying me the hosting. And they, <laughs> of course they send me back the stupid policy that uh, only deals with the 30 day money back guarantee when the client wants to terminate the agreement. And I said, no, 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 I'm not terminating the agreement. I stayed with the ex-host for about eight years. I was very happy with the services they are the ones denying the services, thereby they're breaking the contract, so they should owe me that money back. And they agreed. So uh, they said they issued the refund, but as of the making of this video, I haven't received it yet. So of course I went back to them. And that's the saga. So uh, the reason I decided to tell you this is that uh, those are some of the things that a small business owner goes through. And uh, those are some of the things that take me away from the creative process. So, well, uh, we live and learn. So I have a new host. I, sound up, I signed up for Cloudflare, which is a proxy service that is able to determine uh, to a certain extent any distributed denial of service attacks and filter those. Now with a new host, I also have the ability to block IPs and the new host doesn't encrypt IP addresses in the server log files. So I can definitely look them up and put them into the uh, block list. So uh, I'm happier with the new host and we'll see how things go for the future. <laughs> If you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video uploads. Also, 
follow me on all social media channels and consider supporting me on Patreon. All the links are down in the description.